Welcome back everybody. In this video, we're going to discuss the concept of a limit. And limits is a brand new concept that's specific to calculus. And I'm going to post a lot of videos on limits. We're going to do a lot of examples. But to begin, I want to get started with this simple question here. What is the limit of f of x equals x squared minus 1 as x approaches 3? Now you may be asking yourself, what does the limit of a function mean? So another way to state this question is what value of y does f of x equals x squared minus 1 approach as x approaches 3? Both of these questions are the same thing. So let's show this through a graph. So if I take this function x squared minus 1 and graph it, it's just going to be a parabola that's shifted down by one unit. And what will happen as x approaches 3? Well, at an x value of 3, if we plug in 3 for the function, we'd have 3 squared minus 1, which would give us 8. So we know that the y value of that function at an x value of 3 is equal to 8. So let's uh, reread this question one more time. What value of y does f of x equals x squared minus 1 approach as x approaches 3? Well, if you look at the graph, we can approach this x value of 3 on the function from either the left side or from the right side. And it's clear to see with this specific function that no matter how we approach this x value of 3, the y value on this function is going to approach 8. So the answer to our question is 8. Now, is there a nicer way, a more simple way, to perhaps describe this in notation? And there is. So the way we would describe this scenario is we would say the limit as x approaches 3 of the function x squared minus 1 is equal to 8. And this is the kind of notation that you're going to be seeing a lot in this section. So all three of these things, the original question that we were given, the alternative question, and then this third part here, this notation, they all are equivalent. They all mean the same thing. So whenever you see notation given like this, you can rewrite it as a sentence, just substituting any function you have here and any x value here. And then the other way works as well. You can take any sentence like this in this format or in that format and put it in this kind of notation. Now I mentioned when we did this example that we can approach this x value of 3 from either the left side or from the right side. So would anything change if we got a more specific question dealing with an actual side? So for example, what value of y does f of x equals x squared minus 1 approach as x approaches 3 from the left side? So notice how we're getting a little bit more specific here. We're not just generally saying as we approach 3, we're saying specifically from the left side. Well, from this diagram, it's obvious to see that the y value is still going to approach 8. However, the way that we write this limit notation for this specific question is going to be a little different. So we would still write the limit as x approaches 3. But because we're approaching it from the left side, that's like we're approaching it from the negative side, we would put this negative here. And we would still write the function x squared minus 1. And that's still equal to 8. We can see that through the diagram. So the only thing that changes in this limit notation versus this one is that we put this negative here because we're approaching it from a specific side. If we're not approaching it from a specific side, if it's just generally written as x approaches 3, we would just put as x goes to 3. But since we're approaching it from the left side, we would put as x goes to 3, and then we would put that negative to the exponent 3. Now that negative is not like 3 to the power of negative 1, it's just notation. And then similarly, what if we're given a question, the same question, but instead of approaching 3 from the left side, we are now approaching it from the right side. Well, we would rewrite the same notation, but instead of putting this negative here, we would now put a positive because we're approaching the x value from the positive side. 
So the limit as x approaches 3 from the positive side of x squared minus 1, it's still equal to 8. And we can see that with the diagram. Even if we're approaching this x value of 3 on the function from the right side, the y value still approaches 8. And both of these types of limits, these more specific types of limits where we specify the side, these are called one-sided limits. So you may want to make a note of that. So whenever they're talking about one-sided limits, they're talking about limits where you're approaching the x value from a specific side. And these one-sided limits are actually used when we create a definition for a limit. So we say the limit as x approaches a of a function is equal to a value l, where l can be any real number, only if the limit as x approaches a from the negative side of the function equals l and the limit as x approaches a from the positive side of the function is equal to l as well. So basically, in order for this limit here to exist as x approaches 3 of this function, then the limit as x approaches 3 from the negative side and from the positive side has to exist and they have to be equal. And then if they're equal, then we know that the general limit is also equal. However, if one of these is different from each other, then we know the limit doesn't exist. And we'll do a few examples in future videos where we really expand on this definition and go through different cases of where a limit exists, where it doesn't exist, etc., etc. Yo, what's up guys? Thanks for checking out my channel. Hopefully you got some value from the video you just watched. If you did get some value, big favor to ask you, please like this video and subscribe to the channel. Any questions, any recommendations on things you'd like to see, please leave it in the comments section. Also check out the description box below for links to material and content related to the video you just watched. Peace out.